and good morning everyone. Welcome back. This is uh, Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. And this is what I call Morning Musings. And I'm sharing with you some thoughts on Satan and the victory of Christ. People like to say, well, if Christ came in A.D. 70, then Satan must have been destroyed. But look around. The world is evil. Well, we'll have more to say about that in later segments. But Jesus is very emphatic. Now is the judgment of the ruler of this world. Now shall the ruler of this world be cast out. Now, Jesus said that prior to his cross. And Paul was emphatic in Romans 16, 20. And now the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Greek term, intakai, which never ever indicates rapidity of action as opposed to imminence of action. So here is Jesus talking about the initiation of the destruction of Satan, the power of the cross to crush Satan and to defeat him. And here's Paul anticipating the parousia, saying it was about to come shortly. Well, Christ clearly came to set in motion the destruction of Satan. Likewise, he came to establish the kingdom. We've already established the one-to-one -one direct relationship between the full establishment of the kingdom and the destruction of Satan. Matthew chapter 12, 28. If I, by the finger of God, do cast out demons, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. The question is, did Jesus fail? You know, it's remarkable to me how many people seem to indicate in one form or another that Jesus somehow failed. Well, he came to destroy the works of the devil, 1 John chapter 3. My millennial friends say Christ came to establish the kingdom. Well, if he came to establish the kingdom, then he came to destroy the works of the devil. My millennial friends say, well, due to Jewish unbelief, Jesus could not establish the kingdom. That means that due to Jewish unbelief, he couldn't destroy the works of the devil. I've shared with you two Old Testament verses so far that tell us emphatically that Christ could not fail. Psalms chapter 2. Why do the heathen rage? Why do the kings of the earth set themselves in array, saying, Let us break their bonds, let us cast them away from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh, he shall hold them in the derision, saying, Yet, yet have I set my king on my holy hill Zion. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 5 and following, predicting the first coming of Christ, he will not fail. Psalms 89, the third verse. And let me remind you, all of this is in my book, 70 Weeks Are Determined for the Resurrection, in which I ask the question, could Jesus fail? Could the kingdom, and therefore the defeat of Satan, could it be postponed? Could God's kingdom slash Satan destruction plan be postponed? I discussed that, <coughs> pardon me, extensively in this book. Go to my website, www.eschatology.org, www.bibleprophecy.com. Order the book. Say you mentioned or mentioned that you saw the ad on YouTube, and I'll refund your shipping. Now, Psalms 89. The Lord, <clears throat> speaking of his promise to set the Messiah on the throne of David, said, I will establish his throne like the sun and like the moon that cannot be moved. Now watch this. I will not alter the words that have gone out of my mouth. Do you catch the power of that? You see, God set the time for the coming of Messiah to establish the kingdom to destroy the works of the devil. That was to be in the last days. God said, I will will not alter the words that have gone out of my mouth. Now think of it like this. 
<clears throat> in the very first formal debate that I ever had, I cited this verse and noted God said that he set the time for the establishment of the kingdom, the days of the Roman Empire, the first century. Jesus said, John said, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. God said, I'm not, not going to alter my plan. My friend in that debate got up and said, just because God has delayed the kingdom for 2,000 years doesn't mean he's changed his plans. <laughs> really? If I tell my wife, honey, next May we're going back to Hawaii. And come next April, I then walk in and declare to my wife, honey, we're not going to Hawaii next month after all. We're not going for 20 years. Do you think I could convince her I haven't changed our plans? <laughs> uh, that wouldn't be good. Now, please catch the power of this. Remember, the establishment of the kingdom, destruction of Satan, go hand in hand. Jesus came to lay the foundation for the establishment of the kingdom. That kingdom was to be perfected, consummated at his coming. Luke 21, 31, 28 to 32. At the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. Did Jesus alter those plans? You know, I hear preterists all the time say, oh no, the kingdom came. They were receiving the kingdom in the first century. It was about to arrive in full power and full glory. Oh, but look around, Satan's still here. No. No. If the kingdom came in power and glory in A.D. 70, Satan was destroyed. His angels, his demons were destroyed in AD 70 because God said he had set the time for the kingdom. He had set the time for the destruction of Satan and he would not alter that plan. You know, once again, this is really good news. God doesn't lie. He kept his word. And we'll have more to say on the flip side.